Hey everyone, it's Christian the P4. We're from Dr. Matulowitz. These five weeks for my APPE with her. Here is the calculations video on capsule filling. So a few important concepts before I go into the calculation example. Important concept number one, a complete capsule contains at least three components. The actual capsule itself, or the capsule shell, the active ingredient, and the diluent, or also called the excipient. Therefore, to calculate the weight of one full capsule, you're going to account for the weight of all three components. The actual capsule itself, or the capsule shell, the active ingredient, and the diluent, also called the excipient. So if you haven't seen a capsule filling before, I'll give you a diagram here. So in capsule filling, you'll have the actual capsule itself, the capsule shell, which is the outer shell containing the ingredients inside. It's what you see when you open a, a packet of omeprazole. So the capsule shell is here in blue. Then we're going to fill it with the active ingredient, which will be in white. You're going to fill the bottom shell because you're going to fill the bottom and then attach the top right after. But now, as you see, after you fill the capsule shell, not all of the space in the capsule shell is full. And that seems a little weird for patients because number one, they see, oh, it's an empty space. Did you not fill my capsule correctly? And number two, it's just pharmaceutical elegance. You want to give the patient the full pharmaceutical experience, whether it's bringing them a full capsule and ensuring them that the capsule is full or just making, making the capsules feel and weigh nice. So to fill an empty space, you're going to fill it with the diluent or also called the excipient. So after you fill the capsule shell with the AI, whatever empty space is left, usually there's always going to be empty space because the AI is not going to be heavy enough to fill the whole capsule. You're going to want to fill the reading capsule shell with the diluent, or also called the excipient. Then you're going to screw or attach both parts of the capsule together to give you one full and complete capsule full of the AI and the diluent, or also called the excipient. So when you're weighing of calculating the weight of a full capsule, you're going to account for the weight of number one, the capsule itself, also called the capsule shell. Number two, the weight of the AI. And number three, the weight of the diluent also called the excipient. So concept number three, for solid dosage forms, you're going to account for extra loss. So unless otherwise told, remember to calculate for the 10% extra capsules. Just in case you lose some powder or lose some capsules or make some caps capsules incorrectly, especially in solid, since solid dosage forms are usually harder to compound or are more meticulous to compound. So account for the 10% extra cap capsules, which I'll go over in the example. Important concept number four, the acceptable weight range for a full capsule is based on the maximum percent error according to USP, which is 10%. Number five, partial capsules cannot be dispensed. We're going to round up if the number of capsules is a partial capsule amount or a decimal capsule amount if that's calculated. So for example, if in the calculation you come up with 194.4 capsules, you can't give a patient... 0.4 of a capsule. So that would look like that would look like that. Like where is the extra capsule or a remaining part of the capsule? Or you could give them something like this where you just don't fill the capsule completely and you just fill with the AI, maybe some diluent and then a lot of extra space. So patients would be a little concerned about that, and you would also lose pharmaceutical elegance points. Um, so if you ever get a decimal point for a capsule amount, round up to give them a full whole capsule. So you would give them 195 capsules, or you would calculate for 195 capsules. And finally, important concept number six, don't memorize the following capsule table, but understand how to use it. So here's a capsule table I'm referring to, which you have or will see in lab. Here you have the size of the capsule. Here you have, here's my pointer, the size of the capsule, the weight of the 
corresponding size of the capsule. So a zero zero capsule would weigh 118 milligrams. It would also have a volume of 0.91. And then here are the densities, the, the powder densities. And from these powder densities, you can decide which capsule to use, which size capsule to use. So let's say if my powder has a density of 0.6 grams per milliliter, then, and I know that um, my AI is about 250 milligrams, so I can't fit a 250 milligram AI in the capsule capacity. In a 222 milligram capsule, capsule capacity capsule, so the nearest capsule capacity I could use to fit 250 milligrams of AI would be the 300 milligram capsule capacity, which is the size one. And I'll show you more clearly how to use it in the calculation example. And the rest here, the length of the capsule, external diameter, and overall closed length, we sometimes use that in practice, sometimes we don't based on how much we know about the ingredients and the recipe. So pretty much the, in lab, you can ignore this whole bottom part starting with length of the capsule all the way to overall close length. And really for lab, you'd only need um, these parts of the table. So that information from size to powder density and capsule capacity, you would need to use. Another thing to note, if all the, if all the units are in weight, then you would want to use this, the weight of the capsule. But if everything for some reason, which it shouldn't, which it should not in lab, turns out to be a capacity in milliliters, then you would use capsule volume in milliliters. However, in lab, you're usually mostly going to see everything in weights, so be sure to use the corresponding units of weight of, for the capsule weight. Don't use the milliliter unless for some reason they'll give you the milliliter capacity. So to give me an example, um, here is a script written for carbamazepine 300 milligrams capsule. Brand name is Tegretol. It's an anticonvulsant or an anti-seizure medication. It's written for one by mouth three times a day, and the quantity is two weeks. So we know that the density of carbamazepine powder is 1.2 grams per milliliter. We know that excipient or diluent is lactose. So then we're gonna calculate the weight of both the AI and the diluent also called the excipient, necessary to complete the prescription, and we're going to calculate the weight of one full capsule. Finally, we'll determine the weight range of one full capsule. So step number one, we're going to determine the weight of both the AI and the diluent necessary to complete the prescription. We're going to calculate the weight of the capsules prescribed. So we know that the SIG is written for one capsule by mouth three times a day, and it's written for two weeks. So we know that step one, we know that one by mouth three times a day equals three capsules per day. And we're doing it for two weeks, so that's 14 days. So I write it that, so the units cancel in the numerator and the denominator, days with days. So 14 times three gives you 42 capsules. So that's the amount of capsules prescribed. However, remember up here, I said that for solid dosage forms, you're gonna calculate for the 10% extra capsules to account for loss. So step two, we're gonna calculate the quantity capsules needed accounting for loss. So 10% of that, so accounting for the 10% extra capsules, so 42 times 0.10 plus 42 um, gives you 46.2 capsules. And remember I said up here that partial capsules cannot be dispensed. Therefore, round up if you get a partial capsule number. So we're going to need 47 capsules. Additionally, you could do this by 42 times 1.1 since that already counts for the 10%. So it's basically 
10% plus 100% gives you 1.1. Um, you could either you could use either this method or this method. Either one gives you the same answer, which is 46.2. Rounding up to give you 47 capsules. So step three, after we calculate the number the number of capsules needed, we're going to calculate the amount of AI needed to complete the prescription. So we know that the script calls for carbamazepine or tegretol, 300 milligram capsules. So step three, I'll call it, I'll call it CBZ carbamazepine, 300 milligram per capsule. And we need 47 capsules to account for loss. So 300 times 47, gives you 14,100. 14,100 milligrams of CB carbamazepine total needed. Then we're gonna step four, calculate the amount of diluent, also called excipient, needed to complete the prescription. So let's see. We know the density of carbamazepine powder is 1.2 grams per milliliter. So, given this table, we know the density is 1.2 grams per milliliter. And we know each capsule, the capsule capacity is gonna hold at least 300 milligrams, cause that's the prescribed amount of carbamazepine. Right, correct, let's check it. So carbamazepine 300 milligram capsules. So each capsule needs to have it hold at least 300 milligrams. Um, so we starting over here, the 252, we know this is too small to fit 300 milligrams. So what's the next capsule size, closest capsule size we can use to minimize waste? It looks like the 360 because the 240, the 444 sizes would use way too much diluent and use a lot more waste. So to minimize waste, we're gonna use the next capsule size up, which is 360. That's the capsule capacity. So step four, capsule capacity is 360 milligrams. And we know that the capsule size would be a three. Capsule capacity for capsule size three. So, and we know that the capsule capacity holds 360 milligrams. So as I drew that diagram earlier, this would be, this whole capsule would be 360 milligrams. We know the AI takes up 300 milligrams. So what would be the amount of lactose needed for as the diluent? So math mathematically it works because the 300 milligrams plus your diluent would give you the capsule capacity of 360 milligrams. So solving for the diluent, I'll call this X. X gives you 60 milligrams per capsule of the diluent, which is lactose. So that means to calculate for the total amount of diluent, we know that we're calculating for 47, 47 capsules needed, accounting for loss from the 42 capsules. So here's the sign for therefore, 60 milligrams diluent per capsule. We need 47 capsules. 
So 60 times 47 would give you 2820 milligrams of diluent. So now we finished calculating we finished calculating the weight of both the AI and the diluent necessary to complete this prescription. Now we're going to calculate the weight of one full capsule. So we know that over here, a capsule, full capsule is composed of the capsule shell itself, the AI, and the diluent. Let's do... Okay, yeah, so step five. After we finish step four, calculate the average weight of one full capsule. And let's see. First, we're going to determine the weight of one empty capsule. So from the capsule table, we know that the size three would weigh 50 milligrams, looking down. So the whole column of... Uh, size 3, you, remember as I said, you can ignore this bottom half, starting with the length and the, going all the way to overall clothes length. You only really need the size to the powder density for lab. And we know that the units are in grams or milligrams, so we can cross out this capsule volume in milliliters, leaving you with the weight in milligrams. And we know that for a size 3, it would weigh 50 milligrams. So step five, we know that the weight of an empty capsule, empty size three capsule equals 50 milligrams. We know that the weight of the AI per capsule is 300 milligrams of carbamazepine. And we know that the weight of diluent per capsule is over here, 60 milligrams. So therefore, the weight of all three components is 50 plus 300 plus 60 gives you 410 milligrams total weight of one full capsule. So let's see, what else did this problem want? So we calculated the weight of one full capsule. Now we're gonna determine the acceptable weight range of one full capsule. So step six, determine, given the average weight of one full capsule, determine the acceptable weight range of one full capsule. So that means a capsule to, to dispense to a prescription or to dispense to a patient, must weigh between two values. So it must weigh between 410 milligrams plus or minus 10%. So as I said in the beginning of the video, sorry for all the scrolling, I'm just trying to show you something. So the acceptable weight range for one full capsule is based on the maximum percent error according to USP, which is 10%. So the acceptable weight rate range is based on 10% of your weight of your full capsule. So 410, step six, 410% or 410 milligrams plus or minus 10%. So that means 410 milligrams minus 10% of 410 milligrams and then 410 milligrams plus 10% of uh, 410 mil milligrams. So this plus or minus means minus 10% mil or plus 10%. So 410 milligrams times 10, oh, sorry, minus 10% of 410 and then 410 plus 10% of 410. So that would come out to 369 milligrams, if you do minus, and plus, it would give you 451 milligrams. So the acceptable weight range, acceptable weight range, AWR is my abbreviation here, 
means that the full capsule must weigh between 369 milligrams to 451 milligrams to be safely dispensed to a patient according to USP. So in this problem, we solved for all the parts. Number one, we calculated the weight of both the AI and the diluent needed. So we needed 14,100 milligrams of carbon mazepine and we needed 60 or milligrams of diluent per capsule coming out to with 47 capsules, 2,820 milligrams of diluent for the prescription. Then the problem asked to calculate the weight of one full capsule and the acceptable weight range. So we calculated the acceptable weight range of one full capsule based on all three components to be 410 milligrams total weight of one full capsule. And hence the acceptable weight range is uh, between 369 milligrams to 451 milligrams. So just to recap the important concepts, a complete capsule contains at least three components, the actual capsule, the capsule shell, the active ingredient, and the diluent or the excipient. Therefore, you're going to account for the weight of all three components to calculate the weight, with the weight of one full capsule. And remember to account for the 10% extra capsules to account for loss with solid dosage forms. Number four, the acceptable weight range for a full capsule is 10%. And number five, when you're dispensing full, when you're dispensing capsules or a lot of other dosage forms, remember that you can't get partial capsules. So you have to round up the number of capsules like we did here. And finally, number six, don't memorize the capsule table but understand how to use it. Match the units. If you're using milligram or grams or milligrams, use the weight in milligrams, not the capsule volume in milliliters. And the everything um, going up and down should correspond to one capsule. So everything going up and down, up and down to correspond to one capsule. And you don't really need all of this information here for a lab, maybe for real life. I hope that was useful. Feel free to let your lab coordinators know if you have any questions and good luck with your exam.